So we're going to look at the JPEG analysis now. JPEG is a highly successful uh, image format, especially for compressing uh, extremely complex uh, coloured images, especially around photographs and so on. Okay, so a little bit of theory is that uh, the way that JPEG works um, is to take an 8x8 eight eight pixel block of an image, such as this one here. So it transforms, it goes through the image uh, one column at a time and then by row and so on. And then it will transform each of these pixel blocks into some sort of coding. Okay, so here we typically have uh, RGB values defining the color of the, the pixel on the screen. Unfortunately RGB is, is quite difficult to operate on especially in finding the light level or the, the brightness of the, the image. So we convert it into Y which is luminosity uh, it's a brightness value uh, into the blueness and into the redness. So this this is a format that's typically used with inside TV type systems. We can see here that the uh, the green component has a very large effect on the brightness of the of the image, and blue less. Okay, so so we have uh, these values here, which are the converted values from the RGB. And what really happens is that the eye is extremely sensitive to changes in in the uh, brightness of uh, an object. So we can see here, we can see if we look across here, we can actually see that your eye is picking up the differences in the lightness and uh, the brightness of uh, the objects. Changes of color uh, are your eye is less sensitive to, especially if it's relatively far away from, from the image. So how JPEG actually works is that the Y component is kept with a, f a good resolution f uh, for its accuracy and the blueness and the red components are are, are taken for, for a, a, a lesser accuracy. So the Y, the C, B and the C, R the, uh, then go into what's called the discrete cosine transform and really this tries to uh, arrange the intensity levels for the frequency changes in the object. So low frequency changes are seen down here and high frequency changes uh, with inside this pixel block are seen up here and then we end up with a number of values which relate to the intense the changes uh, of these frequency patterns. So a high changing uh, block would actually see each of the opposite pixels actually change the values. So we'd see peaks up here. If the image block doesn't change that much then we'll typically see peaks uh, in the low frequency components of the image. As we're dealing with uh, uh, quite a zoomed in resolution, then we actually find that for most objects, then most of the the components are fairly low level frequency changes. So the code that we end up with actually has quite a few values at the low frequency, and then we get whole runs of zeros. There is another process called quantization, uh, but at the end of this, we end up with lots of zeros and uh, in, in a run. And a technique called Huffman coding is very good for compressing long runs of the same thing into into a small code. So in this way, we can actually optimize the output code uh, from from the compression. So that's the main stages that we have with the JPEG compression. So how does this look like on the file? Well, our first JPEG is organized with a, a number of tags, and the tags identify some key things, like there's the Huffman table, quantization table that we talked about, uh, there's a comment, end of the image, some Huffman code in there, and the starting point 
is a is a start of frame here and so on. So the first thing that we should see is FFD0 at the start of the file. This can be f uh, then followed by this FFE0 tag uh, which is this, this marker here. After that we see that this is a GIF GFIF uh, header identifier and we see these characters here, here, here and here. Then we get the version number, a major and a minor, and some other details such as the pixel density. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of this on a real file. Okay, so here we are. So there's the FFD8. There's the FF00. Then we're seeing the GFIF here. And so on. So we'll have a look at the the website. And what we'll do is we'll load in that same image. And there we go. So the, we found the starting tag. Uh, we found this APP0 tag. This is the length. Then the GFIF, the major number, minor, and so on. And then what we've done in the code here is that we've, if we look at the, the binary, so there's the binary again. So we can see the GIF, GFIF here and so on. So what we've also done here is that we've tried to identify these special tags. So we can see it's identified this tag here. Here's another one with a comment that's been found. Here's the quantization table, Huffman table, and so on. And we've tried to identify where these tags actually occur. They occur in segment 0 so we've taken 5 12 byte block segments which is typically how the file is stored on the disk and if we look at position 3 3 3 4 here we go okay so this is position 3 3 4 and 3 3 5 as an FFC0. And there we are. So that's the start of the DCT there. Uh, we can also look for the Huffman table. Which should be position 122 two in segment 0. And here it is here. Okay, so this bit here is going to define the, the Huffman table. Okay, so just to check the image, that's what the image looks like. Uh, we can load some other examples up. Okay, so now let's look at the code. And this is the part here where we're actually searching for each of these tags. And it's really trying to analyze for a byte and then for the next byte whether it's equal to these FFC0 tags. Okay, so there's the starting tag analysis where we look at the first two bytes. We then look at the next two bytes the length is identified the next two after that and then we should see the GFIF here followed by the major number, the minor number and the number of pixels Then down here and then, then the detailed analysis we can then see if we find the starting tag this FFE0 
EE tag and all the other tags that are associated with with the within the, the, the file. Okay, so that's providing an outline of the JPEG format.